with Jacobs. Jacobs starts out, and then he's going to slash his way across the goal line for a touchdown. And the Raiders have come to play. The moment was big. It was for a playoff spot. 20 to 20, our score, two seconds left. Carlson from 33. His kick is good. It's magnified because of the moment. We have to win this game or else I turn green. And you wouldn't like me when I'm green. <laughs> that won't sit up here and make excuses of why we got our ass beat in Jacksonville, because that's what happens. Jonathan Taylor, not going to get there. Damn. It's early, but you just don't want this start. Hey. It's play action. And the Jaguars are coming with a blitz. The ball is out. And the Jacksonville Jaguars have it. We got our ass beat. It happens. But we got our ass beat. I think the worst thing you can do, start pointing blame, making rash decisions. We won't overreact. I've got to let the poison get out. Damn. The Colts come up short today in the regular season finale. Just didn't see it coming. I just didn't see this one coming. When you have a moment of failures, wouldn't you really find out who's with you? We screw things up, it happens. But what we're not gonna do is turn a blind eye and have our emotions involved where we're not able to really ask honest, hard questions about why it occurred. The message was, last year wasn't good enough. We've got work to do and we've got to do better. Toughness is rarely shaped in times of prosperity. It's hard to harden up when, when it's sunny all the time. You know, you gotta have a little storm, you gotta have some clouds. And they know the task is big this year. They know we have a lot of work to do. The stream of players in my office after the season, they heard. They know, they know, they know it's a stake and we got some prideful, prideful competitive dudes that are hurting right now because of the way this thing ended. We're not gonna flinch on how we scout, how we evaluate, have great faith in this group to get done what we have to get done. It's a big year for us. I mean, we got hit. Every pick counts. So as we're in here, you know, the more players we watch, the more players we get our eyes on, everybody dial in and focus. Everybody in this room has value to the evaluation of the player. You never know which one of you might be right. The one Completely on the left might be the guy right. It might be the, the one that is right. But I want to make sure we're getting the best guys with trades. Let's bet on the trade. Bet on high end, high end trades. And we're good enough to do it. We're at a crossroad, and there's two ways you can go. You can either you can either melt down in the moment, or you can use it as a launch. All right, let's go to work. more time? The room has grown. It's a big it's dude. I think as you're together for, you know, the five years we've been together, we know how we operate. Somebody can take him. He's an ascending talent. Nothing sexy about this guy. He plays cards. My report's in the system. It is not favorable. Keep up the chatter, boys. We'll get him right. We're all five years in it now, so it's a lot more efficient. To me, there's a lot of untapped potential here. He's a tough physical guy. I think he adds edge to our group. The one thing I'll say about this group is very talented, and they know players. We all are, feel competent, and we're confident in what we can do. You're all worried about the kid? He makes people uncomfortable. He's not a leader. He lacks time management. Put him at the bottom. February, we're trying to get the right names on the board. Make sure we got the guy, right guys identified. I don't care where we got them stacked or lined up at that point. I just want to make sure they're on the board. We'll get them stacked as we go through. Making sure we got them identified is critical in February. Is this guy going to be a 4-4 guy? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You positive? Yeah. <laughs> Huh. Typing that down, Chris is positive. This guy Ooh. Ooh. is going to be a 4 4 guy. <laughs> he won't make it to third. He's going to. 
This is a highly competitive environment. We're all competitive guys. There's an understanding and there's a respect for each other. Everybody has a say in there. It's just hard to find guys with unique size, power. He's got to get off, he can bend, slip and slither. I thought he'd be just a good late round guy. Uh, we can develop. We all want to win, right? So the best way we can do that is find players. They're the cold that makes the train go. We're building our team, we're building the Colts. You can't get all selfish. You can't get possessive of players. It's about us winning. We're at a little bit of a crossroads. We're at a point where we need to find some solutions and that's a big part of what our job responsibility is. We have breaking news. What do we got? We got breaking oh, news? baby. Let's start with the breaking news today. Here is the deal in case you have not heard it. A trade that has been agreed to. The Colts are trading. The Indianapolis Colts have agreed to trade Carson Wentz. Quarterback Carson Wentz to Washington. To the Washington Commanders. For a package of picks. <laughs> a package of picks. He had a second round pick go there. The Colts get a third round pick. Another third round pick next year if he plays 70% of the plays. And then a second round pick in 2022. We thought we needed to make the change at the position. Washington had a needed quarterback. We had been talking. When we came to terms, we thought it was the best interest for both parties. This was never one person's fault when you finish nine and eight and it ends the way it ended. But at the end of the day, it wasn't good enough. It is happening. Officially a done deal. Matt Ryan is being traded to the Indianapolis Colts. Matthew Ryan, done deal. Yeah, for a third round pick. Matt Ryan in Indianapolis. We got a little lucky. I'm not going to sit here and say it was some master plan and everything just worked out. It's definitely been a whirlwind of a week. We had on and off discussions for, you know, four or five days in a row when it kind of finally came to fruition. It gives Atlanta, you know, good compensation. And we still got a second and third, and we got a couple comp picks, so we got still seven picks in the draft. So I think we're still in good shape, and we'll still navigate, move around, and pick up some more as we go. Got fortunate enough to get it done. Just fired up to be coming to Indianapolis. It's an incredible fan base. I think Peyton trained them well a long time ago. It's one of the quietest places, you know, going when they're on offense. As far as knowing about the team, you know, from afar, watching them play the last couple of years, they're a tough, physical, disciplined football team. Yeah, thank you. It's a lot like first day of school. You like went from eighth grade to ninth grade and switched schools or something like that. I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait to meet these guys, get to know them. You can tell the expectation has been set. It's the kind of environment you want to be in. It's unique. You know, I've been around for a long time. A lot of different players play with a lot of different guys and the uniformity of we want you, it's going to be great here. We're, we're going to welcome you with open arms. You know, we expect to win. So fired up to be here and can't wait to get started working. Thank you so much for this. Uh... When you're able to get the quarterback position stabilized with a guy, especially with his experience, history, and track record of performance, winning, and leadership, it was important for us. It will really help us move forward. Where's he at? We'll continue to monitor, you know, free agency. As we find players we think fit us, we'll we'll move on them and sign, and, and we'll get ready for the draft. No, don't. You can't. You can't run that one. Well, we still got work to do. Yeah, we still got work to do.